If you're flying IFR, you will eventually encounter a hold. Holds can be encountered en route, such as these published holds, or anywhere else in a non-published hold. In doing an approach, almost every missed approach ends in a holding pattern. Holding patterns can be used in lieu of a procedure turn. For these, do the entry and get established on final. Don't fly the hold unless you need to lose altitude and coordinate with ATC if you do. We're going to do some holds over the Santa Catalina VOR. We'll also simulate realistic ATC communications with the help of a retired controller from Los Angeles Center. We're flying along and we hear this from ATC. November 784, November Lima, clear to the Santa Catalina Vortac. Hold west on the 270 degree radial. Expect further clearance 2134. Time now 2025. First thing we need to do, draw a fix. Then we need to go around to the 270 degree radial, which is straight west, which is right there. If the direction of turn is not given, it's automatically assumed a right-hand turn, which is a standard hold. If ATC wants left-hand turns, they have to say left-hand turns. For right-hand turns, they do not have to specify direction. And remember, the fix is always at the end of the inbound leg. So that we are holding on the 270 degree radial the opposite of that is 090, which is what would be set in the top of the VOR course or on the head of the HSI needle. And the 270 radial or 270 would be in the bottom or on the tail of the HSI. Now that we've talked about some basics of holds, let's talk about hold entries. For the first entry, we're gonna use this hold right here. 328 degrees is the inbound course. To determine our entry type, let's start at the inbound leg and draw a line up through the fix, like this. Next, draw a line perpendicular to the inbound leg through the hold across the fix. Next, we need to take the end on the side with the hold and lower it 20 degrees. So it should look like this. You have three sections, each section of a different size. The tiniest section would be the teardrop entry. So if you're coming from this area, you would use a teardrop entry. And the next slightly larger section would be a parallel entry. And last of all, the largest section, which is 180 degrees, would be a direct entry. On the direct entry, we simply hit the fix, make a right turn, and fly the outbound heading, which is the reciprocal of 328, which is 148. We know from looking at the last chart coming up from the south toward the fix, we're going to use a direct entry. We can also determine our direction from the VOR. We're going directly to it. All we need to do is look at the bottom of the VOR and we can see the radial. And the radial is approximately 115 degrees, so we are southeast of the VOR. And when the fix is crossed, we need to do the five T's. Turn, time, twist, throttle, and talk. So the first T is turn. We're going to turn to the outbound heading. 148. Next is time. We're not going to start a time quite yet. We'll get there in just a second. Then twist. We need to twist the OBS to the inbound course. The inbound course is 328 degrees. Next is throttle. We can reduce the throttle to hold at a particular speed to save fuel because whether we hold at a fast air speed or a slow air speed, the hold's going to take us the same amount of time. And last of all, talk. We have to tell ATC what we're doing. Los Angeles Center, 784 November Lima, entering the hold over Santa Catalina, 5000, time 2135. November 4 November Lima, roger, expect uh, two turns in the holding. When the to from indicator flips me from to a two right there, we'll start a time and fly outbound for one minute. That entry is now complete, let's move to the next entry, and a little bit later we will do a full hold. Here we're flying directly to the VOR, we're on approximately the 030 degree radial, so that tells us we are northeast of Santa Catalina VOR. And in our previous example, this would be a parallel entry. Once we cross the station, which is identified by that to from flag, switching from a to to a from, we're going to turn left and fly outbound on a heading of 148. And once we cross the fix, we'll have to do the five T's, turn, time, twist, throttle, and talk. So there's our flag flip. We're going to turn left to a heading of 148. We've started a time. We have to twist the OBS to the inbound course, which is 328. The throttle's already adjusted. We did that before we entered the hold. And we need to report reaching the fix just as we did in the last entry. And 
Once we reached one minute of time, we started a left turn around. We're going to make a left turn and intercept the 328 course to Santa Catalina VOR. And once the station is crossed again, we're going to make a right turn to an outbound heading of 148 and begin doing the hold. Then we're going to do a slightly different hold. Let's say we've been given this clearance. November 7, 8, 4, November Lima, clear to the Santa Catalina Vortac, hold south on the 180 degree radial, right turn, so legs your discretion, expect further clearance at 2135, time now 02110, and maintain 5000. And we have to read this back, and here's what I wrote down. Cleared to the Santa Catalina VOR, hold south on the 180 degree radial, right turns, legs our discretion, EFC 2135, Time now, 2110, maintain 5000. Like before, draw a line up through the fix, and then draw a line across and go down 20 degrees on the holding side. Next, we determine our position. We're going directly to the VOR. We can look at the bottom of the instrument and see that 330 is the radial. So we are northwest of the VOR. That puts us in the teardrop entry. So know that 360 is the inbound course and the outbound is 180. For the teardrop entry, we're going to fly over the fix and do our five T's. And the first T is turn. We're going to turn to a heading of 150. The outbound heading is 180. We want to fly 30 degrees toward that. So we need to make a left turn toward the protected side to a heading of 150. And once we have station passage right there, we're going to start a time and go outbound for one minute. Once we're established on our heading and the autopilot set, in this case with an airplane with an autopilot, the next thing we need to do is twist the OBS to the inbound course, which is 360. Next is throttle. We need to be wary of maximum holding speeds. Fortunately, this airplane won't get near any of them. So the only other consideration would be fly the hold at a slower speed to save fuel. And last of all, because we always fly the airplane first, the last step is talk. And then we would notify ATC that we have entered the hold. We would say Los Angeles Center 784 November Lima entering the hold over Santa Catalina 5000 and then give the time in Zulu that we cross the fix. And once again, they would come back with November 74 November Lima Roger, I show you entering the hold at this time. And the next thing we're watching for is one minute. There's our one minute. We're going to start a right turn to intercept the 360 degree course to the station. So we've already got 360 spun in the OBS. All we have to do is intercept that course. And as we turn toward the inbound course, an easy way to know what heading we need to go to if the needle has not started to center. We can look up here and aim for a 30 to 45 degree intercept on the side that the needle is on. Now that the needle has started to center, we can roll out. Once we roll wings level, we'll start a time. And when we start our time, by the time we get to the fix, we want to see one minute. The only time that would be different is if we're above 14,000 feet, then we want to see 1 minute 30 seconds because above 14,000 feet holds are 1 and a half minutes on the inbound leg, otherwise they are 1 minute. But if you're doing a DME hold, you don't need to use time at all. And that's a very nice feature. It makes things a lot easier. And we're going to do that here in just a minute. The inbound leg on this hold is going to be within just a few seconds of 1 minute. And for just a few seconds off of a minute, I would not adjust the outbound leg at all. But if the inbound leg was a minute 15 due to wind, then I would go 45 seconds on the outbound leg. We've completed the entry and now we're actually doing the full hold. And let's say ATC gave us a hold and we asked for five DME legs. And they gave it to us. So normally when we're a beam the fix or wings level, whichever occurs last, we would start a time. And I've actually done so here, but just ignore it. But in this case, all we would do is look at the DME over there. Right now it says 1.9. Well, 
we'll just fly it outbound like this until that says 5DME. And when we see 5DME, we're going to make a right turn and intercept the 360 degree course to the station, which is the 180 degree radial that we were instructed to hold on. So if you're given a hold and it's a time-based hold, you can ask for DME. I suggest it because it is easier, makes it easier on yourself. There's less turns and less things to do. You don't have to worry about time. You're only looking at the DME for distance. So let's fast forward a little bit and we'll watch that happen. And if you haven't subscribed to the channel yet, if you could reach down and push that subscribe button while this thing fast forwards, that would be great. So there's 5DME right there. All we have to do now is start that right turn and re-intercept the course to the station. And notice when we go around the hold, we have the inbound course set. We set it one time when we're done. We don't change it. The outbound course is just a heading. Another thing to keep in mind when doing a hold on the outbound leg, pay attention to the way the wind's blowing and make sure you correct for the wind. It is possible for the wind to be strong enough to blow you outside of the protected airspace around the hold. And as I said a minute ago, when we roll wings level on the inbound leg, start a time, but DME holds are the exception. You do not need to start a time on a DME hold. While you're flying the inbound course, the next thing you're going to do is turn to the right again towards the outbound heading when the flag flips. Holds and hold entries are not difficult with practice, but one thing that makes holds easier is having an FMS. This FMS, which is actually one that I use in real life, is the FMS 3000. It will draw the hold for you if you do index and then hold, and then select the fix you want to hold over, put it where the five boxes are. It will then take you to the hold page, and on this page it will even give you the type of entry that it's going to use. You can even quickly change the inbound course in this case 328 degrees and we're gonna make right hand turns you put it there and it will even change the hold on the MFD and you'll notice it even says a parallel entry And as we cross over the fix you can see it makes a left turn as we would have done manually and does a parallel entry just like it says it would here's the same hold the difference when I recorded this, I did it from a different direction. So people that are really paying attention will see that it says direct entry, but previously it was a parallel, but this part is identical. You may have noticed in the arrow, we were switching back and forth between nav and heading. With an FMS, in this case, you would just stay in nav mode. And when that happens, it will fly the outbound leg as a course and not a heading. Another rule with holds, be at or below holding speed within three minutes of the fix. And if you're in a fast airplane where it's consideration, from the minimum holding altitude to 6,000 feet, the max speed is 200 knots. From 6,001 up to 14 is 230. And above 14,000 is 265 knots. And these are indicated air speeds, not ground speed. But if you're in an altitude that has one of the higher two speeds of 230 or 265 and you see this with 210, your new limit is 210. The lower altitude speeds still apply. The Airman's Information Manual says, pilots should report to ATC the time and altitude or flight level at which the aircraft reaches the clearance limit and report leaving the clearance limit. So you should report entering and leaving the hold, but you don't have to, except when you're not in radar coverage, then you have to do it. So this would be reported the first time you hit the fix and then do the entry, not the second time once you're established in the hold. That's not what it says. It says when the aircraft reaches the clearance limit. And now time for questions and answers. And the answers are going to be given by Don, a retired air traffic controller. And the questions are going to be read by a voice that is not my own. What are some reasons for holds? If you're not holding for a uh in lieu of a procedure turn or some other procedure, then almost always you're holding for weather or some significant delay at the airport. Occasionally it's for a traffic saturation, but that is uh, gradually becoming a thing of the past. What are some common mistakes pilots make during holds? Probably the biggest mistake is when we create a holding pattern that's not published or it's not on a procedure, and we have to describe 
the direction of hold, the turns, the legs, and so on. It's a lot more information that the pilot is not briefed on and not uh, aware of, so it's easier to make a mistake that way. And probably the biggest mistake is turning left or right when the direction was specified the other way. Does ATC care about the type of entry? Again, for a delay holds for weather, things like that, uh, we're just creating a hold at a convenient fix. We really don't care that much. Um, it's a lot more important when it's part of a procedure and you're on a flight checked procedure where there's a protected side. And if you turn the wrong way or enter the wrong way, you could be too close to terrain or some other obstructions. What if I forget? What am I supposed to do? I think you mean, what happens if I forget to report entering the hold? Well, nowadays, uh, all of that is tracked automatically, so it's not quite as important as it used to be. We don't have to take notes and report the time. Uh, it's done automatically, so it's not that critical. But anytime you forget any of the instructions or anything about the holding, it's always a good idea just to simply ask the controller to restate all holding instructions. Does it help if we slow down with ATC permission to f prevent having to hold? And rarely do you hold for uh, sequencing anymore. It's all done by metering and slots, a uh, little vector for sequencing and new speeds. but. Uh, holding becomes necessary, it's uh, pretty rare that uh, changing your speed will have any impact on that. For more information on holds, you can look at the Instrument Flying Handbook, FAA 8083. There's also the AIM or Airman's Information Manual, Chapter 5 would deal with air traffic procedures such as holds and en route operations. There's also the Air Traffic Controllers version of the AIM, the 7110.65. So if you want to know how something works from the air traffic controller's perspective, check out this manual. And for a little bit of extra help doing holds, you can go to e6bx.com. There is a holding pattern calculator where you can input the aircraft heading, the inbound or outbound holding course, and you can also put in the wind correction angle and it will fill in all the answers that you need to fly a hold successfully. But if you do these enough, with practice, you'll be able to do a hold and know the entry without even writing it down. You'll be able to do it in your head. But it does take practice, but it can be done. Thanks for watching.